All right, I'm doing folks. Your boy Marcos went to see five numbers after the name games beaten. Final ball spectacular here, man. I'm pretty much showing you what I think are all of the endings you could get in Castlevania Harmony of Dissonance. And I didn't really set out to do this necessarily. I wasn't like, I'm going to show everybody all the endings. Da -da -da. It kind of just happened very organically as I sat there and, like, you'll see this first ending kind of happens. And I was like, oh, this kind of sucks. Like, I don't, I don't know. This is like that good of an idea. Uh, and then I kind of come back later uh, and I'm like, oh, I was like, hold up. Like, what the hell? Like, you could do this. And then I was like, oh, that's like good, but all right. And then I looked it up and I was like, oh, there's like another one, like a real good ending where I can actually fight Dracula. So you notice in this first one, uh, the issue is I didn't have anything equipped. Like I didn't have any of the bracelets or anything. And I was also missing a piece of Dracula. So you get what I consider to be, I guess, the bad ending of the game where everybody dies, <laughs> except for you. You kind of stay in there and you're like, dang, why couldn't I save the castle? What's up with that? <laughs> like, this is the first ending that I got. And I was so confused. I'm like, man, I put like 10, 12 hours into this game. How long I put into it, you know? And it, it, it's really interesting when you kind of think about it. I like going to this, uh, this website. I forget about how long does it take maybe or time to beat. I don't know, whatever whatever the website's called. Honestly, if you just Google how long does it take to beat X game, it'll go to this site. And uh, I have to save as a bookmark. That's why I don't really remember what, what the, 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 the URL even is. Um, but it'll tell you how long it is. And I kind of like to map it out a little bit when I start a game to kind of time it out. Especially when I'm coming off, for example, like when I'm done playing Dark Souls 2, I'm going to play some smaller games. I need I need a little break. So I'll go and look up, like, how long is this going to take? How long is that going to take to kind of get an idea? So I looked at Castlevania, and it probably said, like, 9 to 10 hours. But I've played this easily for, like, a month at this point just because I only play it portably. Like, this is something that I took my DS to, like, uh, work sometimes. I had to play it during lunch or I play it on my commute or whatnot. So I'm not really putting in, like, hours on end. Like, Dark Souls, I'll sit down there and put the three, four-hour session, you know what I mean? Shout out to Capito. He sent me a funny-ass article. So he apparently saw on the paper an article saying that, uh, like, a parent that was, like, uh, worried about their son being addicted to the Xbox as he plays for 11 hours straight. <laughs> He's like, 11 hours, though? That's it? I was like, y'all the real. Like, when I read that, I was like, 11 hours? That's light work. That's light work, son. Like, come on, man. We've all played for longer sessions than that, man. Like, straight up. I I believe the longest session I ever had was in duty, and I think it was from, like, I think we, I, I think I pulled off at six in, 6 in the afternoon and 6 in the morning or 5 in the morning. I remember playing from, like, after eating an early dinner to, like, the sun coming out. So that's all I want to say from 6 to 6. That was kind of my, like, longest stretch over there. Um... But oftentimes, man, I'll go, like, if I get, like, a chill-ass Sunday, yo, stop playing in the afternoon, kick that thing up to, like, early in the morning, B, no worries. So this is kind of the second best ending, I guess, where I was missing one of uh, Dracula's parts, so I managed to kill Maxim, but he died, and uh, I saved the chick, so, you know, hey, teach throw. And I thought that this was an alright ending, but the fact that they kind of still was, like, a little bit somber, I was like, man, like, either Castlevania just went, like, mad hard in this one, or there's something else. And indeed, there's something else. Here's our third fight over here. So, talk about the game a little bit. Game's awesome. Uh, you know, it, it follows in that Symphony of the Night type mold. Maybe like a Symphony of the Night light to a certain extent. Um, but it really follows in that Symphony of the Night type mold. Game Boy Advance game when it came out. So it looks a little bit blown up over here, but it looks better. I played it on a DS. You can play it on an SP. It looks better on the small screen. Everything looks a little bit sharper than it does when it's blown up like down the TV. Uh, it plays good, though. I played it on my retro on the TV and played pretty smooth as well. It was very enjoyable and whatnot. Uh, these games are just so good, man. And sometimes I just get an urge to play a Castlevania game. And I know I did Symphony of the Air on the year. And I still had that kick to kind of get another one of those. And I hadn't played Harmony of Distance. I got it. I think games I was like having a deal. It was like buy three, get one for free or something like that. So I bought like three games at 15 bucks. And I got one for free. This is one of them. Uh, actually, you know, I think about it. I, yeah, I've already beaten two of those. It was Mario vs. Mini, this one. And the, the Superstar Saga, which is actually a redo, which I thought was kind of interesting. I heard about that. I'm like, oh, you're redoing that? Dang it. Um, I, I played that for probably like four or five hours. I, I like that game, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to continue. That one seems a little bit too long for like a community. That might be something I throw up on the big screen over here and play at the crib at some point. Um, but I was pretty surprised mechanically by the humor and everything about that game. I enjoyed it. Anyway, though, back to this game. Uh, it's cool, man. You get to, you get, so you don't really have weapon variety necessarily. You get to put stuff on your whip or whatever, but you still have to whip the whole game. Uh, you can pick your armor, and it, it does do stuff. That's 100% uh, factual. Uh, but you can also probably not put it, and you'll be, you'll be all right. 
you level up, you gain XP, so those kind of those little RPG elements. It's very RPG light in it. Um, but you'll notice you get levels, and at some points, when you, especially when you go back to like previous areas, you'll really know how strong you are. Because you go into these previous areas and just crush everybody. And you'll be like, oh, like enemies like literally will hurt you one. So you'll be like, oh, okay, well, I'm pretty, pretty immune to that. Uh, sounds good. Uh, so in that sense. And then there's the different combinations, right? The thing that kind of that makes this game unique is the spells. Where you can combine your sub-weapons with a spell. So I think this one's combined with wind. And now uh, you can see it makes it pretty ridiculous, right? That like this book that will normally just kind of like go forward and like attack or something like that. It's going all the way around and it keeps going and it's inflicting tons of damage. So finding that combination of like spell is almost like a Kirby game, you know, where you kind of get like a power up and then you try a couple different ways. Like I remember in Crystal Shards, uh, shout out to Kobe Crystal Sh Kirby. I said Kobe. Kirby Crystal Shards for 64, where you can kind of get two different power ups and mix and match and see what they do. Well, this is this game's like that as well. And for the most part, I did use the um, the holy water. I liked how that kind of worked. But towards the end, I grabbed this guy, and I was like, this thing's a beast. I was like, this thing's a monster. And there's a lot of other ones that are pretty strong as well. Uh, I'm sure there's one that's like top tier or something like that. But you find something you're comfortable with. That's all that really matters over here. Uh, and this is what you get, once again, when you equip both JBs and MK, Maxim, MK, maybe, MKs, uh, bracelet. Plus, you get all the parts from Dracula, which were... Pretty randomly hidden, I'm not gonna lie. I think the only one I was missing was the eye, I believe, which was just like randomly placed. You'll see them as you go through the game, and especially if you try to unlock the map. I uh, I ended up having a, uh, a playthrough. I think I unlocked like 198% of the map. Like I'm missing like a couple things. I just didn't feel like going back. Um, it does do the two castle mechanic, like it does Symphony of Night, but it, do, it does it a little bit differently, which I really liked. You're actually. You warp at one point, you're in the second castle, but you don't really know it until like a little bit later. And all of a sudden, when you look at the map, the map's like, oh yeah, by the way, there is a castle A and B. And then it, there's a map that shows you kind of layering them A plus B so you could see. And you unlock different power-ups that allow you to go to different areas. And that Metroidvania aspect is still very much there. So I'm going to end up giving this game a 9 out of 10, man. I, I, I think, like at the time it came out, I would have even gone as far as a 10 out of 10. Because play this on Game Boy Advance, portable. And whenever this came out, like 2003, 4, 5, I imagine it came out somewhere around there, it would be sick. Now, obviously, we got a Switch, which I can't play this game on yet. But we got a Switch, so, it, you know, stuff you can take portably is a little bit different. But this game is good nonetheless, man. You play it at the crib or you play it portably. And it's got a quick save feature, which is awesome. Really encourage that in every Castlevania game.